Well, George, here you are all sitting down, friends. Was it always the way when you were contenders for that heavyweight championship? I didn't think so. Uh, how would you be friendly with a fellow who knocks you down with a straight right hand and another one who barely miss you with a left hook that almost take your neck off? Joe <laughs> Frazier. <laughs> Joe, did you ever hurt each other? How, do, how could you be friends with a guy who knocked you down <laughs> seven times in the first fight, uh, six times down in the last fight, and every now and then you talk with me, say, I want you to be quiet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you really have to be quiet. I think it was some fantastic fights that we had within the years that went by. If we could do it all again, I would. Oh. They asked me when Muhammad Ali took the title from me, did he hurt me? And there I am with a big black eye. <laughs> Eyes swollen up, and they asked me, did it hurt? Now, Ali... So I think the press did more damage than anything. Well, you fought these guys, Ali, and you've got a face as pretty as a picture. How do you keep your pretty Ooh. face? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> How do you keep that pretty face? Praying to God. Yeah. <laughs> it's the prettiest face in the world. Now, George, you're just about to make a comeback, but when you were retired from boxing for a bit, what did you do in that time? Well, I, I raised children, mostly. I tried to retire on the, on the farm, but all I was raising was dirt. <laughs> so I started raising a lot of children. I'm a full-time preacher, of course. Tell me how you became a preacher. Well, it was pretty easy. I think the last fellow I fought was uh, uh, Jimmy Young. He whipped the devil out of me. And then after that, you decided to become a preacher, take up the ministry? Well, yeah, and, and, and that's why today we travel around the country to, to acquaint people with us other than boxing. The Champion Forever Tour is about the world seeing a video of us Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, and myself, Kenny Norton, as people other than boxers. Right. The, our life stories are compact in it. Right. And I, you, we can't tell you everything now no, you want about a video. Yeah. That's right. Joe, you also retired 10 years ago, but you haven't been away from boxing. What do you what do? You do? Well, I, I did uh, made a start back. Uh, somehow I fought a guy to a draw, and my kids didn't like the way how I look out. I come out after the draw. So they said, Dad, you better hang it up. <laughs> so what I did, right now I have a uh, young man in the gym I'm working with for the newly, let's say, game coming up, uh, the Olympic game. So therefore, that uh, these young men are working pretty hard. My sons and Bert and Tommy, these guys are promoters now. So if I'm just helping the young men, let's say they go to be fine men, you know what I mean? And whatever people like to see me, I go around and promote, and now we're promoting champions forever. It's just a lot of fun, that's all. Most of us, at least people like me, who aren't in the boxing fraternity because I'm just not quite big enough, most of us think of boxing as the film Rocky. Now, was Rocky true to life? Is a lot of that training? We think that the film Rocky was based on Joe Frazier's life. You see, Rocky... And, was, and Muhammad. Yeah. And, yeah, yes. and, and so yeah. the a recreation of some of the exploits they had. He was running down the street in Joe Frazier's old neighborhood. Joe Frazier was, was actually working sure. in a butcher shop or meat yeah. house. And, and did Stallone come to you for any tips or anything or did he keep away and just... Uh... Well, Rocky right, right is pretty clever. Uh, let's say doing the, the second uh, uh, film that he cut, uh, he came into Philadelphia. Matter of fact, I think he took you. No, I never did meet him. No, no. no. Yeah. he took uh, Muhammad, he took, uh, let's say, uh, Larry, all these guys that knew to Los Angeles for a screen uh, test. It wasn't on the basis for a screen test. He just had wanted to learn more about us, about what fighting was all about. He's clever. Yeah. And uh, he took all of those pieces that we did on the screen test, and he put his film together. Yeah. And didn't pay us. Didn't pay us. <laughs> he didn't pay us. Well, you were that good, right? <laughs> he didn't, he didn't pay us. I go. No, Ali, no. Yeah. Ali you're the greatest. How are you the greatest champion in the world? <clears throat> that was only publicity. Oh. Saying I'm the greatest, just to build the fight. I never really believed that. You didn't believe it? Still don't. I believed it. Of course, he fought He's all the greatest the, man. Yeah, he fought all, all the champions. He fought brother, everybody with that. My brother got back Joe Frazier's face. <laughs> <laughs> Real close. And nobody's that great. You beat these two guys. Yeah. You beat that guy. Close. Those. <laughs> you, that, you ain't beat this guy. She's agitated. You beat this. <laughs> <laughs> It's trying to make me mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all, it's all was more like, like fun. 
But uh, we all we all fought Muhammad. Yeah, I mean, everybody did. It's right on down the line, fought him. We're getting mad now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She probably have a strong husband. You better watch it, okay? But Ali did it by, by poems. He used to wind people up by poems and by talking, the Louisville lip. He used to do it by staring. Well, it didn't work on Mohammed, so let's forget about the staring. <laughs> I tried my best. He just turned his back on me. I remember hitting him so hard, I think around the stomach or the side. Yeah. And he looked at me and said, Is that all you got, sucker? <laughs> and I started wondering, how in the world am I... I wanted to raise my finger up and say, how do I get out of here? <laughs> but believe me, this, if there's anyone that's going to lay claim to the greatest, other than Joe Frazier, I'd have to put that tag on Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Mainly because he whipped me, you know. <laughs> You're a huge guy, though. You seem to be the biggest. A, a big one. This is a big one. <laughs> my feet Not... weren't big enough to keep me up on the canvas, though. <laughs> well, look, I just want you three guys to stay here for the moment, because I'm going to... Bring on a man who's been the voice of boxing for over 40 years. At the end of a fight, he's beaten into the ring only by the towel. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Harry Carpenter. <laughs> Squeeze in with these hunky guys. I feel slightly dwarfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, Harry, do these guys bring back fond memories? Of course they do. You are surrounded by the three great heavyweight champions of my time. Without, I mean, in the 70s, these were the men. And Just they had the greatest fights I've ever seen. You've been doing this for 40 years. Just place them in history, these three guys. Well, let's start with George. George had one of the great right hands of all time. And one of his, I'm sorry to say, uh, one, of his, one of his great victories I'm was over you. One of, <laughs> was uppercut. Because, yeah, that's right. In <laughs> Kingston, Jamaica. Uppercut. Which pretty well lifted you off your feet. Ooh, seven times. <laughs> now then, if we go to 1971, you had a fight with Ali, which was one of the great fights of all time. Oh. And you won it against yes. this man. And that, very few people did that. Yeah, well. And then, you, sir... In 1974, with George in Zaire, you produced your greatest, no. for me, your greatest ever performance. When you came off the ropes, we saw it, yeah. on the, and you came off the ropes and you knocked George out. And so, the three of you have all done it to each other in a way, and you're all great, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talking about boxing, and you're all great champions. <laughs> You're all great champions, and you all, I mean... Who invited him anyway? <laughs> well, <exactly. laughs> we didn't do anything to each other. These men have been a part of my life, and I'm proud to have been okay. a part of their lives. I had some of the greatest times of my life with this man and with these gentlemen. I, I wish it could all happen again. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> You're making a comeback, right? Eh? Listen, <laughs> Ali, what do you think of Mike Tyson? Awesome. He's powerful, and he's strong, he's got a big punch. If he hits you, you're in trouble. Right. How would you have fared against him? Would you have whopped him? Stick, move, hit him. Yes. Tire him out. Right. After about round ten, Tire. move in. Are you listening to this, George? Because you're going to and, and mug him. And mug him. 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 Mohammed. I'm sticking real close to Joe Frazier and Mohammed Ali because really, <laughs> these are the greatest fighters of all time. Yeah. You've got to be compared a Joe Frazier type or Mohammed Ali type. There are no George Foreman type. No. Yeah. Oh, oh, if I can imitate these guys on a certain night, I could whip anybody. Right. And to mix it all up, I may be considered a great. Why are you being yeah. so nice? <laughs> <laughs> What do you think with these three great guys here and Mike Tyson not here? What do you think of Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson is the best guy that's around today. Yeah. And that's all you can ever say in boxing. Yeah. It, I agree with people that. always want, they always want to compare, you know, somebody from the past. Could he have been? It doesn't matter. All you have to be is the best in your own time. Tyson today is the best in his own time. And as far as I can see, there's, there's really, begging George's pardon, I mean, there's not too many people around I think could beat him. Yeah. But these gentlemen were the best in their time. Yes. And you, you that's too. something they should all be proud of. You were too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean I was? I still am. <laughs> 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 
I think this, this was no doubt one of the most courteous reporters of all time. He would bring, it was a splendid opportunity when you'd be interviewed knowing that he was representing the country. Other yeah. people you wouldn't let in, but he was so nice and uh, such a gentleman, we'd all let him have private interviews. Whatever he wanted, we would give it to him. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they Now I want to punch him yeah. in his jaw. <laughs> Do you still sing? I still sing. Uh, matter of fact, I just left uh, Atlantic City at the Claridge. Uh, I did like three days there. A friend of mine, Sonny Avaron, a young lady named Cheryl Adams. And uh, we did like a three days there, and it was very nice. It was uh, very good. And uh, I think they probably got some of my music running around somewhere around here. I probably had one that says, uh, Times seem to be hard. Don't forget how long it took you to start. Let's try it again. <laughs> yeah. That's all. With the guitar. Let's go get another fight around here, Mohammed. Try it again. Please don't box me again. Whoa. Ali, do you still do poems? Do you still make up poems about I've things? I've made one for your show. You've made up one for the show? I love your show. I admire your style, but your pay is so cheap, don't call for a while. <laughs> so, Harry. Well, you can see what a pleasure it is to work with gentlemen like these. Because, it must be uh, fantastic. Well, what kind of. It's do you, easy, that's the important thing. Do you have a chance to talk to them before they start fighting? Or is that pre fight nerves and things like that? I wouldn't this? go near a boxer on the night of the fight because no. that's their no. private thing and you don't get involved in that. But two or three days before, yes, and they, they'll work with you very, very happily. And, yeah. uh, I, I and George just like to thank George for the very courteous things he said. He, well, George nice. is the sweetest guy in the world. He's also the yes, most frightening, but he's still the sweetest man in the world. And I'll tell you what, he's going he's to beat Mr. Cooney. Uh, yeah. yeah. You should tell him more that I'm going to whip Mike Tyson also. <laughs> yes, I think you are. That is a little harder. Hey, that's what you want but to do. George, three, three, <laughs> is, three is better than one. <laughs> George, is it wise to go for Tyson? We hear such terrible things about this man. Is you, he heard ter you heard terrible things about Sonny Liston. That's true. Eight to one, Muhammad Ali was against Sonny Liston. Yeah. Everybody said, poor guy, don't hurt the little cute guy. Then the next thing you know, Sonny Liston is getting face all swollen, all on the canvas. And the Fall same thing about down. George Foreman and Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Three to one, four to one. Yeah. If he get in But he tricked me. I could have whipped him, but he tricked me. <laughs> I could have whipped him. He pulled this rope of dope on me. <laughs> With both, of, with both of your hands tied behind right. your back. <laughs> <laughs> both of your hands tied behind your I think back. that was wrong right there. Right. I want to say that before the whole world. Mohammed tricked me out of my title. Okay. <laughs> he had me, to, he laid on the rope, and I, like a dope, kept throwing punches. Yeah, then I came back. When I got out of there, he knocked me out. Yep. In front of the whole world. I'll never forget that. <laughs> Mohammed, why did you do that to me? Come on. Gentlemen, listen, you've just made this the most important day in my life, and thank you very much indeed for coming on the show. George Foreman, Joe Frazier, Muhammad Ali, and Harry Carpenter.